Hello there and welcome to another episode of your most watched business show in the country. This is the Business Weekly Show here on CCTV and I am your host, Michael Obudu. In the next one hour, I'll be bringing you a wrap of all the major business stories for the week. So if you're ready, let's go. We start off with the economy and with all the challenges that we all might have had with it over the period, well, it isn't all that gloomy. Ghana's economy expanded by 4.8% year on year in the second quarter of 2022. Data from the Ghana Statistical Service shows that this growth was driven by growth in the fishing, manufacturing and education services subsectors, with the services sector recording the highest growth of 5.2%. The government in the media budget review revised this year's projected economic growth rate target of 5.8% to 3.7%. According to the finance minister, the reason behind the revision includes the heightened global pressures such as the Russia-Ukraine war, which has caused the revenue measures to underperform. The recent announcement of the country recording an increase in the gross domestic product, thus the GDP growth rate to 4.8% in the second quarter of 2022, beats the government's expectation. The expansion was largely due to the manufacturing and crop and cocoa sectors. The provisional real quarterly GDP growth rate, including oil and gas, shows an increase when compared to the 4.2% recorded in the same period last year. Without oil and gas, the growth rate for the period is estimated to be 6.2% when likened to the growth rate of 6.6% recorded in the second quarter of 2021. The government statistician Professor Samuel Kobina Inim gave more details into the expansion of the economy. From a non-oil perspective, in absolute terms, GDP stood at 38,976.1 million, indicating that from, an, from a non-oil perspective, GDP growth rate was 6.2% 6 relative to the 6.6% 6 that was recorded for the same period in, in the second quarter of 2021. From a sectoral perspective, we see the services sector maintaining its dominance with a contribution of 45.8%, followed by the industry sector 32.1%, and the agriculture sector contributing 22.1%. This culminates in GDP basic prices, 123,802.8 million Ghana cities. Adding on indirect taxes culminates to a GDP current prices of 132,263.5 million GDP provisional current prices. From a seasonally adjusted perspective, we saw that the growth rate that declined significantly between the last quarter of 2021 and the first quarter of 2022 has been marginally reversed with a quarter on quarter GDP of 1.1. The main drivers of the 4.8 GDP growth rate that we recorded for the second quarter of 2022 were manufacturing, which expanded by 8.8%, followed by crops and cocoa, which grew by 4.5%. Um, this development does not seem to come as a surprise to some stakeholders in the finance space. Economist Professor Lord Mensa is not impressed with the expansion, asserting that the growth of the economy at the macro level is not reflecting in the pockets of Ghanaians. He spoke to City Business News. The growth at the, at, the, at the macro level does not mean that things are picking up at the ordinary level. The macro level, government may be spending, and uh, government expenditure is part of the growth uh, line. And so if you measure the GDP and you, I mean, you use the expenditure approach, you realize that government spending, which is, we take a chunk of the expenditures, it will still be improving compared to last year. Last year, we're still, I mean, coming out of profit. And so obviously, we should know that the dynamics of our growth, um, which is mainly, I mean, determined by the GDP. So obviously, when, when the GDP is growing, I mean, the signal that government is spending, but not at the business level and not at the ordinary level. It's not an indication that we are, we are, sort of, we are spending. Now, this growth, we've realized it before. Um, before the COVID, we were growing around 7% and all those. But, I mean, we, should, we, we didn't see that in our pocket. So, um, it's a, a growth that is surprising at all. Because once government is active on the ground and you capture GDP growth using the expenditure approach, obviously... I mean, you'll see a signal of growth. 
And so um, comparing this year to last, last year we're just coming up from COVID. And so um, definitely um, this year will be better than last year. It's interesting that while the country is dealing with increases in the price of food commodities, the story is different in the Bulu region. Traders in the region are lamenting the plummeting prices of their commodities. Why is this so? Currently, there's an abundance of cassava and plantain at the Sunyani Daily Market in the Bulu region. Cassava and plantain, which used to be sold at 50 cities, is now selling between 10 and 2 cities. Some of the traders have been speaking to City News. Ah, they are more careful when they say, "Banchi, they are not born yet." They are born for pa. So they are three bia. We could have two cities, we could have been yebi. Three cities, we been yebi. Five cities, we been yebi. Ato, I come no one no more dear me. Into your banchi, they are not born yet. They are four. They are not yet. Into one, two, 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 Pacho, and they soon had your boy, dear dear, and they are boo papa, and I am taught it's a shan of cock or crying out of four, and that patronity a lot of fennel, a vein, what the bans why I am taught, boy, dear and cafes, I also wish I saw, yeah, J. Henry Sinisia, and there, J. Twenty. Soon ya, hey, dear, Nancena Jan and eh, yeah, Nancena, dear, and your cry, your coffa bar, or monto. Sena na fe so muti muto no se se omo nto na se ni se ni so to omo nto no lolo fe no so ye dey ekuti aye price no first ni eti muto bi 30 40 se se sa de eto no 40 no ni ye di 15 ene 10 na esa nsa bruma mu a eye ku adwuma ne wo hanti e wo mu a awrade to ni su papa guso a e wo mre bi abanchi ba e wo mu a na bodi aba e wo ma na ko na sa mre ya ye dru mu e ye su to bre Eye aduane mre bodi a wo ho banchi wo ho eni nti na mamu hu ni san Sam Bayes also spoke to the news team Pacho we be be to bodi e Na se na price ja hin na ko se na price to compare to the chapter me go Oh Sam Tame go na bodi ne bodi ne No mutimi e bo am ye nu 5 cd ba na de nyame adom nso to to ye nti no aduane abanchi ne de bodi ne ye chain first no I can't name it. You say banchi ye, body ye, but you don't Abba. Oh, banchi ye. I say we are seeing a banchi na fupa. I do a fupa banchi na body ye. Na 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 ni a cane di ye. Ne bua ti banchi ye se di ye. A fupa. I do a ne a fupa. We are seeing. Ye ma e mu ni na. The traders are, however, unhappy with the state of rules at the market, and are therefore calling on the municipal assembly to give a facelift to the roots. When it rains, the place becomes muddy, and during the dry season, the dust becomes unbearable. Aquary, <laughs> From Kwakwai, Lawrence a pencil. From Lawrence a pencil. As I'm a man saw by a new way, no corner, but a best I care a cramp on our part until the same way to be so much of someone your quino. Ah, quine the end yet. Quine umbe do ye. A quaff five years in the debut of Musome Baba Gusso, so moon so. And so time not the acram so ten, I hang your cradle so pensu. Now I said, and then Yanko Pai at Duma, and from our first word, Swaho. Yes, I didn't have any idea. Nye kura. Nye hey, nisu suwa yeti toni ya mana kura. Sembre nye wasu obuwa eno ye ye hey kwa ane ma ye no. O nye nchi obi ya se o se o nipa ni kutaka. O ngure to kuro mu hey nye den. E me toa di ye. Nisu yo toa hey nye kura. Te chene mu ni ye ye den. Yeti. The prices of cassava and plantain are a little bit lower compared to the same period last year. However, the traders at this market are urging the municipal assembly to take a decision in constructing the roads within the market because whenever it rains, the place becomes muddy. From the Maso Maso market here in Sunyane, I am Michael Saponifum for City News. The Bank of Ghana appears bent on clamping down on illegal activities in the financial sector because it has together with the Ghana Police Service apprehended over 70 individuals and entities engaging in the business of buying and selling foreign exchange without a license from the central bank. This follows a special exercise conducted by the two institutions 
on black market operators within the central business district of Accra, specifically Rollins Park, Mokola and Tudu. This was part of a special operation organized by the Bank of Ghana and the Ghana Police Service on Foreign Exchange Parallel Market Operators, otherwise known as Black Market Operators. In all, over 70 operators from identified hotspots within the central business districts of Accra, specifically the Rawlings Park, Makola and Tudu, were apprehended by the police for prosecution. The purpose of the operation was to clamp down on individuals and entities engaging in the business of buying and selling foreign exchange without a license from the central bank in violation of Ghana's foreign exchange laws. The move also forms part of efforts to sanitize the forex bureau sector and stop all market practices fueling the city's fast depreciation. Addressing the media after the exercise, head of the Foreign Exchange Bureau Office at the Bank of Ghana, Adra Kunedu Toto called for more collaboration to bring the black market operations to the barest minimum. The Bank of Ghana, together with Ghana Police um, service decided to undertake this long-awaited um, um, clamping of illegal foreign exchange dealers from the streets of Accra and um, it is something that we intend to do across the country and uh, as you all know if you don't have a license to operate in Ghana a license issued by the central bank it is an offense to trade in any foreign currency. And for the past few years, we see them seriously engaging in this illegal act. Public education has gone out, and still we see, see um, these um, unlicensed institutions around. So today, we decided to start something that will be an, an ongoing thing throughout the country. We decided and Luckily or fortunately for us, we happened to get over uh, 76 um, illegal operators on the streets. She also used the opportunity to issue a strong caution to the general public to desist from engaging the services of foreign exchange businesses operating without a license. It is important that the general public desist from engaging in business with these uh, unlicensed ones. We have over 480 licensed forest bureaus scattered across the country. We will encourage everyone to deal with the licensed institutions and as you go in we are saying that go with your Ghana card to transact business and insist on your receipt. For those who find themselves engaging in um, this parallel market operations we are saying you are, you are inviting the law enforcement agencies to come after you. It comes with a lot of punishment and it is not good to engage. Let's help Ghana grow. Are you planning on traveling to Sunyani soon? Well, you don't have to deal with the long hours to make the trip anymore. Ghana's domestic air travel market is set to witness a major boost with the commencement of flight operation of domestic airline operator with the largest route network in the country, Pashene, to the Sunyani airport. And interestingly, this will cost you just about 600 Ghana seats. How cool! The maiden flight of domestic airline operator Passion Air to the Sunyani Airport was the first commercial flight to the airport since President Akufuado inaugurated the first phase of the rehabilitation and expansion of the facility this year. On board the flight, which lasted 45 minutes from the Kotoka International Airport to the Sunyani Airport, were members of Parliament, members of the Ghana Airports Company Limited Board, management and staff of Passion Air, the media, and other passengers. Speaking at an event to welcome 
Passion Air's maiden commercial domestic flight to the Bono Regional Capital. Managing Director of Passion Air, Samuel Atu Hagan, noted that the airline's Sunyani flight would reduce time spent traveling from Accra to the region to just an hour. The airline industry is an important contributor towards economic development and must be protected. It has increased easier and faster movements of goods and passengers within the country, as well as creating jobs both directly and indirectly for the populace. Air transport is no longer a luxury, but an important component of economic de development where time is of essence. The journey time by road between Siani and Accra is about six to seven hours. By air, this is within an hour. That saves a whole lot of product hours which could be utilized elsewhere productively. Passion Air remains the only domestic airline with the largest route network in the country, operating from five out of six of the country's regional airports with our base in Accra, Kotoka International Airport, Terminal 2. The Bono Regional Minister, Justina Owusu Banahini, noted that the commencement of flights to the region will stimulate economic growth potentials through increased trade and investments. The reopening of our airport has come to such opportune time when the road infrastructure in the region is taking shape. I hold a strong belief that the air and road transport systems will complement each other to accelerate the economic growth of the region by stimulants of trade and investments. Permit me to use this platform to first of all express our gratitude to His Excellency the President for the rehabilitation and reopening of the Sunyani Airport. It is my fervent prayer that we will all patronize the services of the airline. The patronage will not only help sustain the operation of the airlines, but also engender strong competition in the industry in the region, as well as to justify the need for the expansion of the airport in the second phase of its upgrading, even to international standards. Nana Chairman, I wish to also acknowledge and appreciate your good self and all traditional authorities in the region, the Honorable Minister of Transport and the Board and Management of the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, the Ghana Airport Company Limited, and all corporate institutions and personalities who in diverse ways have contributed to the successful reopening and operationalization of the Sunyani Airport. The inclusion of Sunyani in the flight routine, routes of Passion Air has undoubtedly added our dear region to the rapid worldwide air transportation network. And this, of course, will make the Buno region essentially one-stop global commerce center in Ghana and within the West Africa sub-region. From the aviation industry, let's turn to the automobile industry. As the Vehicle and Asset Dealers Union of Ghana has disclosed, they will embark on a demonstration against government's decision to slap a 35% penalty on imported used vehicles, which are between 1 to 5 years old. The Customs Amendment Act 2020 Act 1014 is intended to discourage the importation of second-hand vehicles and encourage assembling of automobiles in the country. The Customs Amendment Act 2020, Act 1014, was enacted to amend the Customs Act 2015, Act 891, to provide incentives for automotive manufacturers and assemblers registered under the Ghana Automotive Manufacturing Development Program, provide import exemptions for security agencies and officers of the security agencies, as well as related matters. Automotive manufacturers or assemblers registered under the program will be granted a rebate of the import duty on fully built units imported from the original manufacturer of the fully built units by the Minister of Finance. The Act also places a ban on salvage cars and second-hand cars of not more than 10 years old. 
According to government, the move is aimed at making Ghana the hub for the automotive industry in the West African sub-region. But this development, unfortunately, threatens the businesses of the dealers who are already paying high duties on such vehicles. In a recent move, the government has imposed a 35% penalty on duties on imported used vehicles which are between 1 to 5 years old. Following several failed attempts to negotiate with the government to amend this policy, the Deputy General Secretary of the Vehicle and Assets Dealers Union of Ghana, Clifford Ansu, disclosed his outfit will soon protest against the development. This, we are saying, is not a, uh, I mean, constitutional instrument or constitutional uh, provision. I mean, and this is not an entrenched provision. Wherever you can tell us that, oh, looking at the state or looking at how it is, we need to do a referendum before it can be amended. And the position of the country today also, in fact, uh, we are in dire need of money and all that. So we cannot, you know, fund those things and therefore we should allow it to go on. This is the legislative instrument. This was done in Parliament. The only thing that you need is only to go to Parliament with the law in addition with certificate of urgency. You just move the motion. Somebody, or a, a member can also second off. We, we, we are good to go. So what is worrying you? Now we should, we rather should go and take this initiative to do the amendment. In fact, we are not happy with it. And we said that there's no way that we are also going to accept. We are preparing ourselves to embark on a massive demonstration against this and to kick against this particular policy. Regarding the demonstration, we are putting things together. But there are some opinion leaders also in the system who have been trying to approach us, talking to us, as if that we should keep quiet and then do a dialogue with the government. We don't have any problem dialoguing with the government because we know that if we are going and have that dialogue, the government should move from the opposition and we can also move from our position and meet a halfway. But you cannot take an entrenched position somewhere, stay at your comfort zone and be asking me to come to you for a dialogue. We don't do that. It is, you want me to understand and accept you, but you don't want to understand and accept me. And how do you conclude a matter like that? So it is only a demonstration that we think that we can do and demonstrate the rest of the world for the whole Ghana to see that it is not as if we are against, I mean, the establishment of those factories in Ghana. No, not at all. That is not our position. But our position is clear that the clauses that we put in the act, remove them so that we can be free in our operations and those people also can be free in their operations. Let's turn our attention now to the mining industry as the sector is set to receive a major boost following the Ghana Chamber of Mines investment of 1.3 million Ghana cities in research into key challenging areas confronting the Ghanaian mining industry. The Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber, Suleiman Kone, added that to get solutions to some of the key challenges, the Chamber has this year given over 700,000 Ghana cities in research grants to 11 postgraduate students and lecturers of the University of Mines. Ghana has for some time now been competing with South Africa as the largest gold mining country with strength in other mineral extraction like manganese and bauxite. However, for the Ghanaian extractive industry to stay competitive and ensure trickle-down benefits to the masses, the Ghana Chamber of Mines has since 2020 taken the lead in promoting research into key areas of concern confronting the mining industry. For 2020 alone, the Chamber of Mines has granted over 700,000 Ghana cities to 11 postgraduate students and lecturers to research in areas including new hybrid technique for drilling and blasting, for stable walls of open mine pits, developing of environmentally friendly and sustainable small-scale gold mining methods and model for Ghana, intelligent agriculture for alternative livelihood in mining communities among others. The Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Chamber of Mines, Suleiman Akuni, spoke to City News about the research grants and anticipated benefits. To be competitive, because like I have said, Productivity is the watchword. If we don't support the University of Mines and Technology, then we are shooting ourselves in the foot, so to speak. So it is in our vested interest as an industry to ensure that productivity is top-notch. And the best way to do it, besides various variables, so to speak, is to look at what you can do to enhance productivity human capital development. Two of the researchers spoke to City News about their research and the support from the Chamber of Mines. As I'm speaking now, since I submitted my report in June, I've been working on the project to make sure that it is up to the point where it can be implemented by the industry. Uh, I was to design 
a novel reactor for plant site preparation of waste activated carbon so that gold that is locked up in the waste activated carbon can be recovered on the plant. The, the, the reactor has been designed, some initial test work have been done, but now we need to firm up the resource. So we need to continue doing some test work on the reactor so that we can enhance the reliability of the resource. Is the funding is a very great motivation to do the work because most of the research we do, one of the things we struggle the most which is funding because we kind of have the technical know-how but getting the money to support the work is quite sometimes very difficult. So yes, the money and then the, the collaboration, the chamber office, especially with the participating mice, uh, will really make this work a success. So I'm very, very happy about it because I know that together with that col um, collaboration, we can achieve much. Now to the oil and gas industry, and Talo Oil has achieved about 60% of its promised shared prosperity target in key sectors of the Ghanaian economy from its offshore petroleum operations in Ghana. This is about $6 million from its operations in support of the government's free SHS alone. The company says it remains committed to adding a critical boost to local economies, elevating the quality of life and overall prosperity for generations to come. In response to the high expectations by Ghanaians to benefit from the country's hydrocarbon resources, Talo Ghana, the operator of two out of the three oil fields in Ghana, has set out a mission to ensure shared prosperity of returns from its petroleum extraction in Ghana. While handing over Talo's infrastructure investment support project to government at Ariebo, the social performance manager of Talo Ghana told City Business News that Talo was of the belief that the only way to sustain hydrocarbon development was to build a more prosperous social and economic future for Ghana through skill development. In 2018, Talo Ghana Limited um, decided to support the government of Ghana's VSHS agenda with 10 million worth of classrooms and dormitory blocks. So this is about the seeds of those um, facilities that we are providing to support secondary schools across the country, particularly in the western region. So as we speak, this is a 12-unit classroom block, and uh, we are looking forward to it um, accommodating between 480 to 600 students, depending on the number in each classroom. It's going to provide a lot of relief to overcrowding in classrooms and support um, teaching and learning in the school. We have always pride ourselves in um, providing shared prosperity and fostering shared prosperity. So if today you can see all the people here singing, quite excited that it's going to relieve some burden, of course, it's a great fulfillment. And we look forward to completing the other seven other um, blocks that we have committed to providing to support um, schools around the country. The district chief executive of Elembele, who has been pushing for the residents of the oil and gas enclave to benefit from the petroleum resource, said it was a good sign. It's very refreshing yes, sir. And looking at the investment that Talo Oil has made in this school. This is probably one of, most, one of the most deprived SHS in this, in this country. Uh, it's barely 29 years old. It started as a community day school. Gradually it's progressing to a boarding school. But as it is, uh, infrastructure has been a, a very big issue for them. Government, as you can see, is doing it best to provide some additional infrastructure. But it's, it's very welcome. It's really coming from Talo. We move now to the agricultural sector as the Ghana Cocoa Board's fully traceable cocoa management system is near completion. The cocoa management system, when implemented, will compile a database of all cocoa farmers in Ghana and all transactions made by authorized cocoa industry entities in the country to enable for easy tracking. Currently, purchased cocoa can be traced to the community level in Ghana. However, this traceability system does not start at the farm level, which can prevent cocoa companies or other sector stakeholders from verifying whether the cocoa they are purchasing meets their sustainability criteria. 
The Cocoa Management System, when implemented, will solve this problem by compiling a database of all cocoa farmers in Ghana and all transactions made by authorized cocoa industry entities in the country. Deputy Minister for Food and Agriculture, Yao Frimpon Ado, speaking at the Ghana Cocoa Board's 75th Anniversary Lecture and 2022 Cocoa Day Media Launch in Accra on Monday, assured that the system will be running soon. The hand pollination, rehabilitation of cocoa farms, irrigation, pruning and subsidized fertilizer programs have positively influenced our production patterns over the past few years. And as we scale up these initiatives in the coming year, we will have stability in our production levels. I have been reliably informed, Mr. Chairman, that work on the Cocoa Board Cocoa Management System, the CMS, is near completion with some 664,529 farmers captured in six out of the seven cocoa growing regions in the country. Yes, a credible database on our farmers is surely a prerequisite for the full implementation of the Cocoa Farmers Pension Scheme. Let me assure you all, especially our farmers, that we will have a decent pension for our retired farmers. Meanwhile, former Vice-Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Ligon, Professor Ebenezer Ojo Wusu is advocating more investment into cocoa research in Ghana. This, he believes, will go a long way in developing the sector and closing many loopholes in the sector. Professor Ojo, who doubles as a former board chairman of the Cocoa Research Institute, spoke while delivering his lecture at the same event. If we want to progress and go beyond our current production capacity, and overtake our friends from Cote d'Ivoire. <laughs> then apart from the environmental concerns raised, we ought to place high premium on research into cocoa technologies to ensure that we assume a leading role in cocoa research and innovations. Know that all needed early and high yielding varieties, issues of insect pests and disease management Agronomic management issues as well are things we inherit from good quality research. The 2022 National Cocoa Day celebration, which has coincided with the Ghana Cocoa Board 75th anniversary celebration, will be held on the theme Cocoa Board at 75, Sustaining Our Environment, Wealth and Health, with series of activities from the 28th of September to the 1st of October 2022 at the Suhum Presbyterian Senior High School Park in the Eastern Region. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Access to funding remains a major challenge for most small and medium enterprises in the country. On the other hand, our commercial banks who have the finance but find such ventures rather risky. And this is becoming a major setback for companies that want to go into full-time exporting. The Ghana Export Promotion Authority has revealed it is creating a single platform to bring SMEs and banks together to curb the situation. Small and medium-sized enterprises in the country face a huge financing challenge from production to exports. Local businesses and SMEs are unable to meet the demands of commercial banks when they are seeking credit facilities to expand their businesses or for exports. One of our bigger challenges like as an SME trying to 
be export ready is lack of information lack of information on where to go when you get to the export market that is one second is access to export finance and lastly when it comes to letters of credit and every financial aspect that comes to export when you get this information as an SME, you don't know where to go, you don't know where to turn to. Export, it's not something that you just do today and you export. So normally, it takes a long time before you can, you can start to get money and pay. And the bankers, too, they are business people. So normally, they, they, they want what you can do today and tomorrow you get money. So they normally want to help people for their training, for their trading. Because if somebody buys things from Accra today, Tomorrow, he or she can start selling and getting the money. But export, especially if, if it is manufacturing, it will take time and you do your documents and other things before you can ship. The Ghana Exports Promotion Authority is stepping up engagement with SMEs and banks to help remove some bottlenecks affecting the ability of local businesses to engage in exports. The commercial banks need to help us to grow our exports. Um, Unfortunately, Ghana Export Promotion Authority doesn't have the way with that. We are not a commercial bank. We are not a non-financial um, institution. Um, there is the Ghana Exim Bank, which is the Ghana Export and Import Bank. But they, they need to work with us. They need to work with the commercial banks because they, what they can do is also limited. We need to work together. GEPA, Exim, the, the commercial banks all need to work together to improve our export capacity. The, the truth, and in fact, the most important truth is the fact that if we do not push hard, if we do not push hard as stakeholders in the export um, ecosystem, um, we are going to lose out um, in, 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 in the after um, trade that is, that, is, that is now the the discussion, I mean, the, the, the thing that is being discussed on the podiums, on the roundtables, on the, on the panel discussions and all that. Um, we like to talk about it, but if we do not put practical steps in trade, I mean, in, in, in place for our businesses to also play in that space, that big market that has been created, um, 10 years down the line, we'll be blaming government that, oh, now, uh, people from Sierra Leone are selling their stuff in Ghana. People from Burkina are selling their stuff in Ghana. People from Rwanda are selling. They are taking, I mean, if you don't, um, if you remember, there has been um, discussions about Nigerians taking over our retail market and stuff like that. Officials of GEPA speaking at a forum organized for banks and SMEs believe the initiative will go a long way to help local businesses. We are going to do a follow-up after this meeting. We talk to the banks and we talk to the SMEs and we are hoping that at least, at least, a few who had no dream at all of getting any type of finance will be able to get something from this meeting. At least they can start a conversation that will lead to success, lead to export finance, and will be able to help them in whatever they are trying to achieve. And Ghana Export Promotion Authority are at the forefront of all these banks. Zenith, um, Stambik, Consolidated Bank, Afri Exim, Exim Bank. The forum afforded representatives of some local banks and the Exim Bank to sensitize local business owners and also take note of their concerns. Don't you find it worrying that a lot of beauticians do their work mainly with their discretion and not by following laid out standards? I was surprised when I learned the other time that there actually is a relaxer for each type of hair. But from what I have seen for a while now, it appears that anything goes. This must be why beauticians have been encouraged to inculcate modern international standard practices in their line of work to help improve the sector. In recent times, the beauty industry has been seeing massive evolution from contemporary practice to modern methods as many beauticians have grown from just beauticians to beauty entrepreneurs. Many beauticians have evolved from just walk-ins to bookings where a potential client casts book an appointment before visiting a salon. 
beauticians say the practice helps with documentation and issues related to law in order to help streamline their businesses. Unfortunately, however, very few persons within the industry in Ghana have been inculcating such modern forms into their work, with a few others gradually emulating. As part of efforts to encourage many business owners within the beauty industry to evolve and expand their businesses, the Ghana Beauty Awards has trained various groups of beauticians across the country at an event dubbed Beauty and Entrepreneurship Summit. The event, which was held in Kumasi, brought together speakers from diverse fields including legal practitioners, bankers, chief executive officers as well as accomplished beauty entrepreneurs to train the groups on how they can grow their businesses by adapting new trends and educate themselves in the field in order to meet the current standard of practice. Speaking on the sidelines of the Beauty and Entrepreneurship Summit, one of the speakers who is the founder and CEO of Marie Noel's Pa and Salon stressed the need for beauticians to align themselves with modern trends. Most of the times, uh, uh, beauty industry, they don't really understand the work ethics, especially in this, I mean, era. Because there's new things, new trends, new uh, business uh, um, ideas, new... You need to educate yourself with, uh, how do you call it, the beauty industry, because things are happening every time. You need to learn, and also with the contracts, you have to know where to sign and where not to sign, so that your clients are happy, you are happy, you don't put yourself in any tight corner that would um, make you um, have to go to court or anything. So that's, we are also trying to put regulatory bodies in place so that at the end of the day, whether you go to um, a corner store or a, a place where you are not likely to be, the standards are the same. We have to try and then break into that market so that when the, um, the therapist also knows that anybody all walks of life can walk into my space to do their hair or nails. There are certain quality products that they have to use depending on your status, wherever you are, you know, you can also be able to produce something right. The leadership of some beauty groups who took part have also been outlining how beneficial the summits will be to their businesses. <laughs> Yeah, you know, cosmetologists, you know, and I drew baby, I need to put a lawyers, oh, need bankers, you know, I can't do my own, yes, sir, oh, then I throw, I need a a who just say education, you know, and you far, you know, you need to say be be now they call lawyer, oh, right, eh, who be, and I say the end, you know, me here me do my own, I say me call bank, you know, me do seek a call C A B. And I said, "Dear, in Tina, me 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 jumana. I was a me brave me who was a man me customer, and I'm a client. Yeah, wo, a profile booker. Yeah, if you record it, you never will say client bar. You better record it. Now, senior, say you need appointment to get here. It be a wedding, na na, baby, sa na. You be booking na ya she. Say in case, say you may dey na you be na a maswa ni a you be ye." As you see, I may who say, I will see be a yen on paper. I send you back, that's to be banner say, a bay ye giddy giddy up. Ye can you see? In the same sooner is it into why you say, dear, no, my ye free. Some small and medium sized enterprise owners are demanding that the COVID 19 response grant meant for their businesses be devoid of politicization and unnecessary bureaucracies. Quite a number of them who could not get access to the first phase of the grant expressed worry, indicating that getting access has been frustrating. The Ghana Enterprises Agency, GEA, which replaced the National Board of Small Scale Industry in 2020, is a government agency under the Ministry of Trade and Industry. The GEA, established by Act 2020, mandates GEA Act 1043 to promote and develop small and medium-sized enterprises in Ghana. It is also to interrelate 
administer and stimulate the development of micro, small and medium scale enterprises in the country. The COVID-19 response grant under the auspices of the Ghana Enterprises Agency is expected to help the SMEs with viable opportunities across the country to survive the COVID-19 impact. But getting access to it is gradually affecting business owners. Some business owners who spoke on the sidelines after an engagement session on how to assess phase two of the COVID-19 response grant at Koforidia expressed their frustrations. It's a good initiative, but um, I feel it will go to some people. People who really need it might not be able to get it. Some of the criteria they gave is too much, like uh, you should have at least six uh, workers at least and then the 80 180,000 is too much well and uh, I saw with some people who might not be doing uh, proper bookkeeping which will not help them get on board with the program and I have is the registration process um, I think the information they are requiring um, from those who want to apply for the grants are a lot and uh, I think they are, they are very detailed information that they are asking for. That uh, I think the normal um, or ordinary businessman in Ghana may really struggle to, to get those information for them. And uh, I think the end result is very few people uh, can benefit from this grant. Uh, so that is, that is the, the, the challenge. Some 300 SMEs across the country benefited from the COVID-19 response grant in the first phase. The chief executive of the Ghana Enterprises Agency, Kosi Yanki Aye, and the Eastern Regional Minister said Kwame Echampon urged SME owners to take advantage of government's effort to help their businesses to be resilient. They further urged them to be diligent with the COVID-19 response grant. We need support to even apply. Let them help you. That's why we are here. So take advantage of this opportunity and also share the good news with your family and friends so others work. So on behalf of the Ghana Enterprises Agency, I want to say a big thank you. To some of those who received the last time, I visited some of the factories across the nation and I've seen the impact. Those who have transformed their businesses, those who have actually employed people, and it's a beautiful thing. There's nothing more fulfilling in this world we are all aware of how COVID-19 pandemic ravaged our country and others living in its unbearable economic conditions. Government consequently began implementation of policies and programs to bring relief to the citizenry. Have you noticed that sign in town lately? Well, as part of a strategic plan to move Melcom to a new level in the service industry, renowned shopping mall, Ghana's largest retail shopping center, Melcom Plus, has unveiled a new logo and other new packages. This new identity, according to manager of the company, is purported to bring the world a... <laughs> Ghana's largest retail shopping center, Melcom Plus, from a single store in 1989, has come a long way in its service-oriented investments in the favor of convenience and affordable shopping in Ghana. With a current outreach of 55 retail stores across multiple formats and 12 cash and carry stores, Melcom Group has announced its readiness to expand and extend its services for the convenience of Ghanaians. In this regard, its rejuvenated identity was unveiled on Thursday. September 22 with the introduction of a new brand logo. Executive Director of the Melcom Group of Companies, Sonia Sadwani, explained to the media what the inspiration behind this move was. The inspiration behind the new beginning is that now that we have the new generation with us and we have a customer who has now bigger, better, higher expectations, willingness and wantingness to have a very, very nice shopping experience with international brands, with uh, products from all around the world, right here in Ghana with them. So we started today with our new rejuvenated logo. Blue is trustworthy, reliable and calm. 
Red is bold, strong and energetic. And the white is sophisticated, pure and pristine. So that was our basis around getting a nice new clean logo. So the logo is part of this whole rejuvenation, relaunch, reboot that we're having. What is the future for Malcolm following this new beginning? Group Managing Director of the company, Manoj Sadwani, tells us more. We are redefining and expanding the product range across all our categories. We are aspiring to fulfill consumers' desires across all demographics. Immaculately blending the traditional with the modern to offer you world-class products and services at your doorstep. We are introducing new concepts such as the soup, ice cream, live kitchens with fresh ready-to-eat food and more international franchise outlets, gourmet restaurants and cocktail bars to offer a world of experiences for our consumers. We are making significant investments to develop our fresh departments, including fruits and vegetables, butchery, deli and bakery. To do this, we are sourcing the best produce both locally and from all across the world. Additionally, we are focused extensively on training and on skill development, especially for executives handling those areas. Now to the much anticipated business Olympics. If your company didn't participate, then you missed out on the grand opportunity to build team spirit, exercise and have fun at the same time. After COVID-19 disrupted things for a while, the event is back from its two-year break. Well, since you weren't there, this is what you missed. The score so far? 2 0 so far. Against you? Against our opponents. So you score them? Yes, please. How many more minutes do you have to go? About three minutes more to go. Okay, so you are hoping to win this game? Surely we are hoping to win this game. Okay, we wish you luck and we hope you win this game. Thank you. So I'm going to speak to Alisa Hotel who are also taking part in this year's game. So tell me the various disciplines you're taking part and your expectations. Uh, we are almost in all, almost all the disciplines. We are in swimming, tug of war, ten, table tennis, long tennis, uh, basketball, volleyball. We are almost in all, both male and the female. Okay. And yes. what are your expectations? Are you expecting to win most, or and what are some of the disciplines that you feel that you can win? Well, I, I, I've only just joined the company like uh, six months, but I heard the last time the games was done, uh, Elisa won the football. So hopefully we're going to take that crown back and plus some more trophies and other bits. So yes. What kind of preparations have gone into hoping to retain the cup? Okay, well the guys have been training very hard, back at the hotel, going to sports fields and that. So. Yeah, no, the training's been going well. Okay, so those, this is Alisa, and they're hoping to win the football again. Um, the last time we had the Business Olympics, they were winners, and they're hoping to win. So we live to see. By 5 o'clock, we'll know whether you won or not. So we'll, we'll come back to you at 5 o'clock. Thank you very much. So that's Alisa. Let's move to Vanguard um, Assurance. They are also hoping to win quite a number. Oh, we're actually winning. We are winning. It's, it's not been a, it's not been a plain to talk, you know. We are actually in a comfortable lead now. Um, we are standing here. We just did the lime and spoon, and it's going very well. So so far, so very good. Yes, we mentioned earlier in your studios that we are winning not less than seven trophies, not less than seven. So which disciplines are you looking at? Okay, so scrabble, um, football, um, lime and spoon, table tennis, lawn tennis. Talk of all the disciplines actually. Okay. Yes. All well, we wish you well, and we hope you win. Okay, sure. This game has been one of the games that we are looking up to. You know, we are the defending champions okay. for three consecutive years. We defended the trophies. Okay. So this time round, we want to collect all the trophies here. Okay. In fact, we've been doing training for the past three days. <laughs> Only three days that you can win? <laughs> for the past three, I mean, I mean, a, a targeted training. Okay. But as for the GCB sports team, all the time they are on the floor doing all the key feed training to make sure that whatever we are going to do, we do our best to come out victorious. So definitely these games 
We plan for it. We are in here to defend our titles. We want to dominate in every field that we do. You see, our aim is dominance. Either it is in the area of sports, in the area of banking where we are the masters, in the area of everything we want to dominate. So this game, uh, we, 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 we give all our best to this game and we are assuring you that at the end of today, you will realize that GCB is going to catch all the trophies. So you just saw that that and more was all you missed at this year's Business Olympics. But well, I hope to catch you there next year so you come and have fun, unwind, exercise, and build some good team spirit together. Well, that will be all for today's edition of the Business Weekly Show here on CTTV, your most watched business show in the country. For more business stories, please check out our website, ctbusinessnews.com. My name is Michael Obudu. Let's connect on Twitter. And then we'll catch you same time next week. Stay safe, stay informed. Bye-bye.